What's up, nerds? Nerd! Three, two, one. Happy New Year! Yes, my friends, welcome to 2022. It is I, Gaz Master, with another Magic the Gathering puzzle quest. Today's quest, Soren the Mirthless. He is a new exclusive Black Planeswalker available for IRL money in the vault, if you hurry. <laughs> and you can pick him up. First off, I want to express a wholehearted gratitude for you, my friend, for being a member of the party. If you're not yet a subscriber, today's episode, although the uh, Soren is provided by the uh, Octagon, thank you, Octagon. Um, really, the channel and all of its endeavors and the fun that we have here is is really over the last year has been because of you. I truly appreciate you. I know you could be anywhere in the world. You chose to spend this. You choose to spend these brief moments into the psychotic that is my brain power, and I appreciate you as always. If you're not yet a member, 80% of the people watching these videos are not subscribed, and it really helps the channel out. So I'm going to blatantly ask you for the new year. Let's get to a thousand subs, and I could really use your help. So if you have any recommendations for folks, if you have anybody you know that might enjoy the content of this channel, you have a Discord group or a Facebook group or something like that, encourage them to come check out the channel and subscribe. It would really help us out. Join the party, get inside the Discord group where I give you exclusives, free content, additional faster stuff. You get to see builds quicker. This plug brought to you by Gazmaster and all of his pandering. Yay! Click the link below. Let's get rocking and rolling. Octagon, where would I be in 2021 without having you guys actually start to really support the channel the way you have? Thank you so much for everybody at Octagon. Uh, just, I can't say enough great things about how much I appreciate your guys' support of the channel. And one of which is providing me this uh, early access to this Soren the Mirthless. So, Soren the Mirthless. Uh, he is a mono black, 104 life level 60 uh, planeswalker. He's got three abilities, which all of them do. He's got Open Wound, which is 13 loyalty. That is really expensive. Draw a card. Then you may create X blood tokens. If you do, you lose X life. X is the base cost of the last card in your hand. Uh, skin of a Killer. 20 mana, or 20 loyalty, rather. Create X Soren Vampire tokens. X is three plus the amount of shield on blood tokens you control. That card's level becomes half of that creature's power rounded up. And then Soren's Vampire is a... Uh, token flying imminent death haste level it's a 2-2 creature so essentially if you have 10 tokens on the board or 10 shields on a token I should say then you get a 20-20 powered creature because every one is a 2-2 so it doubles that power very powerful very quickly now here's the kicker they have haste and level when this creature loses a reinforcement decrease this card's level by two when this creature dies create x blood tokens x is this card's level so if it gets destroyed you're bumping up your levels and in addition to that if you're doing something that it'd be neat if there was a card that we could sack a creature and gain loyalty for it if that was the case which i think there might be um then this would allow us to build some stuff that would essentially power and fuel destroying the creature using our loyalty ability to make another creature with haste and wind up winning the game fairly quickly i haven't quite found anything like that but if you have an idea in standard i'd love to hear it uh so that's that and then finally like raise us through flesh pinhead reference yay 25 loyalty for each vampire you control create a blood token destroy the blood token you control gain x life deal x damage to target opposing creature deal x damage to your opponent's planeswalker x is the uh shield of the blood token you destroyed so i get something that's 30 30 uh in shield token uh, they're locked down my creature stuff i can't do anything with it no worries i can use my third ultimate ability and i can wind up going face and destroying a creature and gaining life which might be the be all end all. I will admit the gameplay is very simple with Soren. He's a one focused uh, mono walker, which is use your first ability, maybe one, uh, once, maybe twice, depending on the cards that are in your build. And once you have 20 plus in power uh, for your shield tokens, then you use your secondary ability, swing for haste, hopefully enough to win the game. And then if that still doesn't work, you ramp up into your third, use third, go direct to face if they've got the board locked down, game over. Uh, loyalty ability, or mana gains, plus five to black, plus four to red, plus three to uh, white, so that makes him a total of plus 12 overall, pretty good. Minus one to blue, minus two to green. His static evergreen, at the end of turn, you put a blood token on the board, that's it. Let's get into my popper build. All right, so here's my popper build. We're gonna do Clerics of Life's Bond, nine mana, white, black, three, three, vampire cleric. When a cleric card enters the battlefield, or the board under your control gain three life. 
When you gain life, each cleric in your party gets plus one, plus one, or gains one shield permanently. Permanently. Very important. Taunted Ink Caster, or Tenured Ink Caster, 10 mana, 3-3 three, three Black Vampire Warlock. When this creature enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus one, plus one. When a buffed creature you control attacks, your opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Uh -huh. We're seeing some stuff here. This guy right here is the gem, he's the bell of the ball. Scion of the Swarm, 13 mana, flying 4-4 four, four Vampire Cleric. When you gain life, this creature gets plus two, plus two. Permanently. This card is ridiculously insane good in renewal decks. Just insane. It is so good. Uh, Vampire's Kiss. This is definitely a flex card. Eight mana target player loses six life. You gain six life. Create two blood tokens. A lot of synergy there. Highborn Vampire. Eight mana support card. Vampire Cleric. When you gain life, your opponent loses one life. At the beginning of each combat, the first creature in your party gets plus three, plus oh until end of turn. Uh, closing statement, a little hasty removal. Spell Satchel, another flex card. Not really the greatest, but it does help get some loyalty conversion for us to get them going. Biblioplex, a little uh, loyalty conversion. And when you activate a loyalty ability, draw a card. If that card is a spell, it gains half of its mana. Otherwise, discard that card. Poet's Quill, one of the best uncommon life-gaining cards. And it's all black. All the life gain, uh these cards are in black. And it's because of Lolth and this guy. Support card, artifact equipment. When the support enters the board, learn. While on the board, the first creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains lifelink, and a little mortality spear for a little more removal. That is the deck. You want to take a screen check? Clicky click. Let me move my face. Clicky click. We're going to use that deck. We're going to go up against Arlen. All right, let's go. Let's see what she's got. All right, so first things out, we're going to mute that down. We're actually going to get our clerics on the bond as board as quickly as possible. And black. It's all black. I... I really like the seven black and then plus three plus three to other colors, like your secondary colors. I like the plus three to your main, uh, or plus seven rather, to your main loyalty we have in uh, some of the other mono walkers. I really enjoy that color combo. Um, even if you give us bigger minuses, I'm okay with it. Um, because there's not a lot of conversion in black, so at least not in what's not not in spell casting you know what i mean maybe there's a couple creatures that allow you to do that but that's not really their forte uh yeah let's let's get that out as quickly as we possibly can we're gonna go here get the black match all right cool we got them both boom boom so now when this creature enters the battlefield target creature gets plus one plus one so i can give it to our opponent but i'm not going to do that you want all of your creatures to be buffed because as soon as they attack they take two damage you gain two life and every time you gain life your vampire gets bigger on the bottom there. So he's getting bigger and bigger. Cool. Swing. Let's go, baby. Uh, I thought I would be a little bit bigger than that. That's okay. Winds up keeping us from taking some damage there. Now we got to go fetch our next one. Highborn vampire is good. Let's go ahead and get that out. And we're literally just trying to get to our secondary, our first ability. There it is. So that we can draw that card, get our blood token pumped, and hopefully draw something with a big casting cost. Most of the stuff here is kind of mid to low level, so... It's not going to work really, really well when you see the peasant or the, uh, the, there we go. Oh, that's really nice. Once you see our bigger builds, then you're going to see what that is. So we just, we draw the card. Cool. We get 10. Uh, we hit confirm. So we lose 10 life. The token gains 10 shield. So it's up to 12. We take, and down we take the damage. And then we draw the card and we want to get tenure and ink master, ink caster. Actually, we want to get this out more. We want to gain that life. It's all about that life game, baby. All right, we'll go red. Okay, cool. What's he up to? He's down to 94 now. So we're pretty... She's about there. We're pretty level right now, although we have a bit of a board presence, a bit more of a board presence than her. All right, getting that conversion now. Here's the one I really like, so we're going to go ahead and scooch that down. Uh, we're going to go ahead and power these up. Nope, didn't get anything. Okay, so our, our life gain is now charged. It's going to hit the board. He's going to get that. Cool, whatever. I'm not scared because we're actually going to get that. And our removal is going to be charged up, so we don't have to risk this guy getting damaged. I definitely want introduction to uh, prophecy, so I can go search for my next card that I want to draw. And now it's all about getting my, my loyalty up to second tier so that I can use my secondary ability. Okay, cool. Here this comes. She used her ability on him. 
Mortality Spear. Peace, buddy. See ya. And I don't have to worry about losing my critter off the board. All right, cool. I got a five swap. I'm going to take that. Uh, do I have another loyalty swap? I don't. Well, I have a five swap, so I'll take that. And what am my loyalty up to right now? My loyalty is up to 17, so I need three more. Let's do this. We'll do blue into there. Cool. And if you hit your second, you're oftentimes hitting your third. I'm going to go ahead and pump myself up. Swinging for 10. Bang, bang. Life gain all the way up to full health. And there we are. We're swinging with a really powerful critter. Now, we're subject to removal right now. And you're probably thinking, well, guys, you know, actually, you're, you're pretty vulnerable right now. All they have to do is have one removal card. And you're pretty much starting over. You're right. I mean, that is the way that it is. Look at that. That's pretty. But then that's why haste is such an important thing. Let's mute that down. Let's go ahead and go here. Let's go to secondary ability. Wang, wang. We go from there. Now, if we really wanted to, we probably could have played a uh, the first ability first and then next turn done the second ability and maybe had enough to swing one turn to win. That way we're not risking rem having our card removed. However, it's such a big play. You know, we got to swing two times here to be able to win at this stage. That's essentially what we have to do. All right, let's go here and here. And let's go there. Did not get the green drop. But gaining life, full power, swing for 10. Do an additional that. We're one turn away. We should be able to, if they remove one of our creatures, still be able to swing and win. Cool. All right, that's pretty much game. I guess they paired us against somebody who's playing a somewhat peasant level build as well. But that's cool. We got another five swap. We've got another loyalty swap. Take that. That's all right. That's game. Boom. Look at that. That's how you do it, baby. That's how it's done. And that's how we win. I really would encourage you, if you get this or you have these, these uncommon creatures, go build them out. There's a much better synergy with that vampire uh, the one that gets plus two every time you gain life. I didn't get a chance to spotlight it in this play, but he is a beast when you wind up seeing how well he plays. Phenomenal. But that said, that's just our popper build. Let me show you our peasant build. All right, so if we're talking about peasant builds, then we're going to be talking about all rare cards that are really great. You're going to know if we're especially concentrating on hitting our loyalty abilities as quickly as possible. Explore the Vast Lens is the key to that. Seven mana for a learned card lesson, or it's a lesson card. Each player fetches the first spell or land support from their library. Each player gains seven life. Each player gains seven loyalty. So for seven mana, we both get all the things, which is why it's important that your thing better be better than their thing. And since our thing has haste, I think our thing's a little bit better. The other thing we're using to ramp into loyalty, this is another version of it, Valderan, uh, Valderan Estate, 11 mana support land at the beginning of your turn convert two gems to loyalty gems now in addition to that when you use the mana field or hit the mana field you create an additional blood token so that helps and when the sports gem is matched you may lose three life and you may uh when you do when you lose life uh the first vampire card in your hand gains three mana it's optional you don't have to do it uh but that is what it is now if we're talking about life and vampires then one of the ones that i like is the valent valentin valentin Dean of the Vine. Vein? Vein. Eight mana. Uh, legendary. Unblockable. Lifelink 3-3 three, three Vampire Warlock. Invoke Lissette Dean of the Root. When an opposing non-land creature dies, exile it instead, then create a pest token. If not invoked, create three pest tokens instead. So when we kill one of their creatures, if they get exiled, we get three pest tokens. That takes from their life. Uh, they lose life, and it allows us to gain life as well. It's very interesting. Uh, let's see, so unblockable, lifelink, kicker, 4-3, null priest of the oblivion, 8 mana, kicker 8, when this creature enters the battlefield, pick one of the first four creature cards from your graveyard, return it to the battlefield under your control, if something dies, you can bring it back, wind up doubling your power. I actually like this creature quite a bit, I think this is really the spotlight creature in this build, and one that you may be using your mythic builds to go get this creature in your uh, hand. Falconrath, 4 bear, 11 mana, flying 3-1, vampire and when this creature deals combat damage to your opponent's planeswalker create a blood token so that's nice but when a blood token loses a shield if this card's in your graveyard return this card to the battlefield under your control this would like in a black green walker unfortunately soren doesn't take advantage of this but if you could put this creature in your graveyard in mass with like gather the pack or 
Uh, even Liliana, I think it's Master of Death. I'm not sure which one it is, but that kills creatures, puts them in the graveyard. Then you get a blood token and it loses a shield. All these guys come to the battlefield. That's three ones. If you had lifelink or anything else, it'd be fine. But flying and three one and returns from the graveyard for basically just swapping a gem on the board. Pretty solid. Mask of Grizzlebrand. Grizzlebrand, I've talked about this before. 12 mana, legendary equipment, 3 shield. Uh, well on the board, the first creature gains flying and lifelink. When your first creature dies, you may lose life equal to the creature's base power. Uh, creature's power total, actually. If you do, draw X cards. Those cards gain X mana. X is the amount of life you lost this turn. So if you've taken quite a bit of life from you in some way, this card allows you to draw that many cards in based on that amount of damage you've taken, and i.e. give them mana equal to that. Very powerful card. Definitely one you should be working with to try to break. Search for Blex, 9 mana. We want to find the cards, put it in our hand. When we do, up to 4 cards, they get damaged. This is one way to put the uh, vampire into the graveyard, because whatever we don't take are destroyed. Uh, Hogger Mauling, very important. Destroy their stuff, and if you do it with a horizontal match, you get to actually get more uh, land forming on the board. Snuff out for that hasty removal, and Haunted Ridge. Now, actually, I don't like this card compared to... Closing Statement or Mortality Spear. I'm just featuring this here because it's a rare card, and that's it. And the reason I don't like it is because I think Closing Statement might be my favorite removal card right now. Uh, Mortality Spear may be second, and then this is a distant third. And the reason is Mortality or Closing Statement can target tokens, and there's a lot of hasty tokens right now. So be mindful of that. Snuff Out is a targeted removal. So if you can't target them, i.e. Gaia's of Revenge... This thing just sits in your hand, doesn't do anything. So that's why I prefer Closing Statement. And a little Haunted Ridge for a little extra mana gain. No big deal. Quick edit here. I wound up playing a couple of games with the previous card in play, the Valderan Estate. It's actually bugged right now. I several times said, no, do not do the damage to me. I don't want it. And it did the damage to me anyway. So uh, I took it out in favor of Biblioplex. <laughs> At the beginning of your turn, convert three gems to loyalty gems. An uncommon card, better than Valderan Estate. The only big side up to that is that it helps get your vampires out faster, but we don't need that. We need the loyalty. That's what we're going to do. Let's go. All right, so let's go up against Sarkhan, the Brokon. Let's go ahead and mute that down so we have that ready to rock for his inevitable hasty bits. He's probably going to be running 10 as your Phylath, so we definitely got to make sure we keep our creatures in, or our removal in line to be able to take care of that. We're going to keep that. Uh, let's go, it is black, red, and then uh, white. There's a nice white match there at the bottom that I'm going to take. And actually, we want to get this out before anything else, because that allows us to be able to start ramping up our loyalty. That has got to go. That is going to be a big time problem. Keep black search... Uh, let's go ahead and go here. Boom. Excellent. We're going to search. What do we need here? Uh, we want that and another snuff out for as we are going to kill some creatures. We put that vampire in the graveyard. So now when we match, uh, when we bring him out, we do not want to do this simply because we have our removal spell in hand. We don't. It's not important to bring that creature back to the yard as much as it is, or to the field, as it is to put this one in the yard. So, or I put their creature in the yard. So this is interesting. So now I want to see, uh, what is this? So when a blood token loses a shield, so you have to direct match it, right? And I'm not sure that there is a direct match anyway to there. So let's do this. We're going to ignore that and let that be a thing that happens. And are we up to our first? No, we are not. So we're going to go here. Boom. Boom. Put Falcon. And that's another thing too. You get to discard and draw. So put those creatures on the bottom uh, position so that they are the ones that ditch into the graveyard and have the potential to come out much cooler than if they were done directly. So now I can do this again. I will go, oh, if we'll go here, I was hoping for some type of combo, but it did not happen. All right, so there's another creature that must die, but that's okay. We're going to ditch you, exile you. We're going to draw a card, hogger mauling, 
Uh, yes, we're going to take that. That'll be 11 more points of damage to us. Come on, hurry up. Again, Octagon, I adore you guys, but you guys got to put this to a point where data just is totaled and not having to count each one because it gets old really, really quickly. Uh, let's go here. We discard the card. We gain the card. We Did we pull one out of the graveyard? Is that why that reinforced? I didn't think that lost the shield. Uh, we're going to go ahead and snuff him out. Bye bye Put two of those in the yard, and now it is our turn again. Yeah, I think that does. I think it just has to be mana field matched, because then I don't have any more in the graveyard. Yep. So I just have to ma I just have to hit the mana field. I don't have to lose the shield. Uh, unless it loses shield when you destroy mana field, support this support loses one shield. It does. So as long as I'm getting mana field, it destroys it. It, it loses the support. So that's cool. I did not know that. Thank you very much. I'm learning just as well as you guys are, right? Boom, boom. Got my secondary loyalty. That thing's up to 16. Do I want to get greedy? Do I want to do one more uprising on this thing? It's up to 18. I think uh, 18 hasty hasty. 18 times 2 would be 36. So it'd be a 36, 36 creature. Let's do one more. Let's get, let's get a little greedy here. Uh, I'm going to ditch that and that. Put you up yonder. We're going to go ahead and do our first ability, Open Wound. We're going to draw that 8 mana. Um, so I'm going to try Invoking. Get a 16. Did say Confirm. Does it go up by 8 or by 16? So it'll be 26 if it's 8. It went by 16. Cool. So that's another way you can kind of cheat it out. I didn't want to invoke that creature, but it gave me something bigger to go do this with. I will take that. It's a nice little hack there. Okay, cool. All right, now we want to go ahead and do that. Uh, take our five swap. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We're going to go double blues. Boom. So that does the thing. We're going to keep that. Boom. Boom. We're going to maul that. Get our token for black conversion. And now here we are. Now we left a five swap there for him, but that's okay. He didn't take it. Totally cool. Much better. This 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 card for land conversion works much better than uh, the other the other land. This is just so much better. And in fact, hopefully it puts us at two. It does put us at two, and that should be game with thirty five. So we push the button, and then we wait. <laughs> Boom. So we got a seventy six seventy six with fly <laughs> haste flying imminent death beautiful things we're gonna go ahead and crunch that and get another one of them on the board get some lifelink uh sure we'll bring another creature on the board uh no not now uh we'll we'll just do that so there's eight there's nine there's 76 there's game that's pretty good that's pretty good that's pretty good pretty fun nice little way of control we lost a total of four life but we had enough healing that we actually got full health that's why i like building into my builds enough lifelink that you can play your game over and over again even if you lose 15 20 points of damage or take 20 uh you lose 20 points of life or whatnot you have enough life gain in that you're going to compensate for it throughout but that is not my mythic build let me show you the mythic build okay mythic build we're going to be talking about a mythic build we're going to be talking about olivia Voldran, 11 mana, 3-3 three, three black red vampire. When this creature enters the battlefield, create three blood tokens. So when she hits the board, even if she dies right away, you get a you get three added to your blood token. Uh, when a blood token loses a shield, deal one damage to target opposing creature. It gains the vampire subtype. This is a lot of fun. At the beginning of combat in your turn, gain control of target opposing vampire. It gains haste and imminent death. If you can't, create a blood token. So even if, like, if you're playing against somebody who's running vampires as their build, cool. You just get to take one of their deals. If not, uh, and they're not a vampire, you get to make them vampires, and you get target control. She's a vampire lord. I love it. It would be really neat that when those creatures died, because this is a masterpiece, if those creatures die, she gets some type of plus after that, because 3-3 three, three is pretty easy to destroy, but that is not important. Again, explore the vast lines. Go get in some loyalty. That's what we're really talking about. Prismatic Bridge, get your creatures on the board quickly. Mask of Grizzlebrand, 12 mana equipment, black card. Uh, first creature gains flying and lifelink. Uh, Subnote, you can use uh, Ma or Grizzlebrand himself or Mask of Grizzlebrand. I like Mask of Grizzlebrand in this scenario. Both are interchangeable, and the reason I say that is because flying and, and lifelink 
Grizzlebrand doesn't need it. When a creature dies, though, however, with this, that's where you get the big benefit. When the first creature dies, you may lose life equal to that creature's power. If you do draw X cards, those cards gain X mana. X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Mox Jet, all the black stuff for free when you mana field. Uh, awaken the Blood Avatar, destroy one of their creatures. They do a bunch of damage to face. Get a token that swings for face. Every time it swings, it does damage to face. This one, I have a dramatic finale. 10 mana, support card, enchantment. Uh, while on the board, your creature tokens get plus one, plus one for each of their reinforcements. When a non-token creature you control dies, create two inkling tokens. This effect can trigger up to three times per turn. Mortality Spear for some hasty damage. Closing statement for some more hasty removal. And then Vorpal Sword, 14 mana support card equipment. While on the board, your first creature gets plus six, plus oh, and gains death touch. When your first creature deals combat damage to your opponent's planeswalker, gain X loyalty. X is equal to the support's level. Yada, yada, yada. There's a screenshot. Screenshot. Click. We're going to use the deck. Essentially, what we're trying to do with this build is we're looking to get ramped up just like we were before. Let's start the new year off strong. All right, immediately Mox Jet. Yes, sir. We're going to close that closing statement. And we, let's see, she doesn't have haste, so if we can somehow ramp into her, cool. But I am not going to hold my breath. So black, red, and what is it, white? Yes, it's white. Black, red, white. Um... Let's just go here. Actually, I should have gone green. That was a mistake. <laughs> so now immediately, oh, now let's go read our, our token deal because we already have a blood token on the board. And what's really neat about blood token, I, I gotta, I'm going to say my initial review, we're going to keep that. My initial review of blood token was uh, at the end of your turn, create a blood token. That's all that it is. I, I really would have preferred that for Soren, create a blood token. It, it wouldn't have been just create a blood token. It would have been... You know, every time you did something, or maybe the first time you do something per turn, maybe a gem swap or something, something. Because at the end of turn, I'd, I'd rather have it ahead of time. I'd rather have it before the end of turn, but it is what it is. Now, to finish my thought on blood tokens. I I, I was lower on blood tokens than I, I think I should have been. Because this ability to, uh, to uh, discard and draw actually matters, especially with like Olivia Crimson Bride. If I'm trying to get creatures into the into the yard, she becomes, uh, or that becomes a viable option to get it done just with him as a static standalone creature um, or a static standalone walker and the creature. Really, frankly, you don't need both. Either way, uh, I don't need to do anything special to put that card into the yard. It's not too hard. I don't know why I'm rhyming everything lately. There it is. There we go. There we ditch a card. We draw a card. We get Olivia on the bird. We had three more shield. And we're just trying to get up to our secondary ability with ramp and loyalty and whatnot. As quickly as possible. All right. So there's another mox. Don't need all the mox eye. But they're appreciated. Let's do this. Boom. See, there's mask. We need that. All right, cool. That's in. And we have a full hand when it comes to uh, a removal spell. Closing statement is in there fully charged. Let's see what they've got. They're doing some things. I'm assuming they're hitting the land drops. Um, oh, this is, a, this is a repeater deck. So he's using a wizard class. And let's see if we survive the turn. It's a loop deck, it's an infinite loop deck, and I don't know that we'll get to take another turn. That might be it. Hey look, we got one more turn. We're at 14 life. <laughs> so that guy's gotta die. We can't wait for him to attack us. And we need to gain life back, so. And we want to be able to, that's the mox, where's, that's the blood token. So what we really want to do here is not use closing statement. We're going to mute down that. And we got to get some lifelink going. Um, yeah, I don't know that that's going to matter. We got to, we got to do this because we got to do the uh, mana field so we can strike him in the face. Boom. Do our deal. Gain that. And then we're going to go ahead and enter the combat phase. We're going to take him with Olivia. So we have him. He has haste and now imminent death. We gain that life, we gain this life. We do use Mask of Grizzlebrand, so we're gonna take a point of damage, we're gonna draw a card, it's gonna gain a point of deal. And now we just gotta hope that, mm, that's gonna do six. You only live once, let's go. <laughs> so I got another Olivia, she gained six mana. 
should be able to get her on the board. The only challenge is that she doesn't have haste. Uh, so we're going to do this and this. I'm gonna mute that down. We need the life link, so I wanna really get this out first. Yeah, let's go here. Not enough, not what we were looking for. Now let's hope we don't die. Uh, yeah, that guy's gotta go because we can't have something on the board that's not gonna be able to be destroyed, so he's gotta die. Hasty removal, my friends. You gotta have hasty removal. That is the nature of the uh, the deck build. Uh, that is the meta right now. You gotta have haste removal. Let's go, with that said, we don't need, we do need another closing statement powered up more than anything. So we're gonna go here, boom. We gain more loyalty, yes. Our blood token's only up to 11, so it's not gonna, or 12 now. They didn't do anything else. I have half a mind because we have Grizzlebrand on the board. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my secondary ability. That's going to put a 24, 24 creature on the board with life link in haste. So I'm going to go get 24 life right now. It's going to pump me back up. Oh, excuse me, 30. And we're going to go ahead and go here for a five swap. Yeah, we'll go red. Boom. All right, now we have Vivian or Olivia. All right, so we gain, we're up to 45 life now, and our biggest creature's in first position, so that's actually good. Do they do anything? They have that, that's fine, but closing statement. Again, hasty creature removal. Not an option, folks, not an option. You gots to have it, my friend. You gots to gots to. We really want this on the board, so we're gonna try to use our, um, that somehow. Is there a way I can match it? Not really. So let's go here. Well, that's good. That did well. Boom. Some more life gain. 73. 3. And let's see. Let's see. There's another one. Look at this guy. My goodness. Three of these in a row, but what did I just say we need to have? Let's see if we survive. Ah, oh, that's brutal. Come on, man. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. No. Dang it. <laughs> oh, so close. Had he just attacked, we could have probably pulled it off. We might have won. That's all right. That gives you a good spotlight, and it also shows you guys you're not going to win every match, and there are some decks that just wind up doing well. Rawl, is it Viceroy is definitely one of the strongest dual-color Planeswalkers in the game right now. Wizard class and his mana gains just make him a beast of a dual-color walker to go up against. But let me give you my final thoughts here. All right, my friends, Soren the Mirthless <laughs> at zero life out of 104. Uh, you, this is a good example of where the life matters. Maybe, you know, an extra 10, 20 life points. I, I, the one thing I would suggest to you, Octagon, is if we could get these monocolored planeswalkers to be higher life totals, um, that would make them more... Listen, the mana gains, you guys have really done well. You've done really, really well with balancing them out. And I actually really like Soren the Mirthless. Um, is he worth the IRL money? That's for you to decide. The, the, this, this walker is for folks who really enjoy playing with um, vampires who like Vampire Tribal, uh, who loved Soren the Mirthless's uh, deal. I, I think his his token ability, I think, is stronger than Zerial's uh, because, because of the consistency. Zerial's can be broken but it requires a lot of luck. And if you're going to use, uh, I forget the name of the card, Zara, the, the Xanathar, Xanathia, or whatever it is, the card that gives you 20s all the time, you gotta, you got to factor in that it takes time to build up to that, at least a few rounds. A, you got to draw the card. B, you got to get it on the board. B, C, you got to keep it on the board. D, you got to get it all the way up to its proper uh, flipped ability or its ultimate. And then when that happens, you're probably around round 5 to 7, maybe even as late as 9 to 11. And I argue that you can actually get to your ultimate with Soren faster than you can with Zeriel. Or you could get lucky with Zeriel and get it in a turn two, right? 
that's possible. I hopefully have spotlighted for you the strengths of Soren the Mirthless as also some of the weaknesses. Uh, you know, is this the best builds that I had spotlighted here? Probably not. These are just some builds that really featured and focused on his abilities and what he does. Are these game winning builds? Uh, I would definitely use uh, uh, Grizzlebrand in, in some of these builds. I just pulled him and, I, and I've been using him and I've been impressed with him so far. The other side of that is, is that you're really looking at Black, although has a lot of life gain, uh, which is necessary for him and Lolf specifically. I think it really lacks in removal, uh, mass removal. Um, there are some nuke the board stuff, but not nuke the board and then leave your stuff on the board. Uh, the snow, uh, the snow card that actually destroys everything and brings your creature back from the graveyard, that might be a viable option. It might be something you can play here just as kind of a, a yeah, just as a backup and something smart to do. My friends, what do you think? Do you have Soren the Mirthless? Did you pick him up? I hope that this spotlight and this feature and this deep dive lays out for you exactly what is great about him and really what might be some of the challenges you go through with building with him. I enjoyed playing with him. I think he's a lot of fun. I really like getting to his secondary ability. And again, keep where, where Soren will become an S tier Planeswalker is if we have something that destroys a creature and then gives us... Uh, <laughs> when we find something that destroys a creature and then gives us blood tokens equal to that, that would be pretty cool because if we do that to our secondary token and gives us loyalty from that, you know, that's really what it comes down to. Destroy a creature, get loyalty equal to power toughness. That would be awesome. I would love to have a card like that in the game. Octagon, make that happen because that would make Soren darn near unbeatable. With that said, my friends, what do you think? I appreciate you could be anywhere in the world. Is Soren to you worth the IRL money of $24.99 American USD dollars? If so, comment below. And as always, join the quest, like, subscribe, follow, comment. Let me know if you've picked up Soren or if you think he's worth the IRL money in the comments below. It really helps the channel out when you engage. But as always, until our next quest, my friends, which I have a couple of videos in queue ready to come out for you guys and I'm very excited to share with you guys, including my Planeswalker tier list. Till our next quest, swords up.